Number 33, use the data provided to graphically determine the order and the rate constant of the following reaction. And then we have SO2Cl2 yields SO2 plus Cl2. And then we have a beautiful uh, data chart here in which we have time versus concentration, right? Brackets always mean concentration, which is molarity. And it's a little confusing, right? Because then you go back to time. So just know that, I mean, they could have just extended this out a little bit, but this is one set of data, the second set of data, the third set, the fourth set of data, the fifth set of data, because now you're going back to time and concentration, the sixth set of data and the seventh set. Okay. So we have to plot these graphically. Now on the bottom of the screen, I do have three different graphs that we should memorize, especially for their units to know which order this reaction is going to be. If they give you a data chart and they definitely want you to find out, you know, graphically the order, the type of graph will lead you to what specific order this reaction is. So I always start from, you know, left to right or the lowest number first. Zero order reactions are when you plot your concentration versus time. Now, your concentration is going to be the y-axis, and here's all the concentration values. There are seven of them. So this is going to be your, you know, part of the y-axis. And the time is going to be always the x-axis. So... As we notice, for each graph, the x-axis doesn't change. It's the y-axis that changes. So I'll say this is, again, the time, which is the x, and this is going to be somewhat of the y-axis. Now, we're going to first find out if it's zero order. And if it's zero order, that means that if I just plot that concentration per time, I should get a straight negative line. Now, let me show you how to do that on the calculator. If you are given data and you want to graph your own data, right? All you got to do is press this stat button and you're going to say edit. So press just enter. So now you have your lists. L means list. So you have your first list, L1, your second list, L2, L3. We only have two lists here because we just have an X and a Y axis. I'm going to put my uh, X axis values as L1 and my y-axis values as L2. So I'm going to put all my x-axis in first. So I'm going to say 0 for the first one. Then 5.00 times 10 to the, I love to use the EE button, 10 to the third. Okay, then 1.00 times 10 to the fourth as my third uh, time. 1.50 times 10 to the fourth, and I just keep pressing enter. 2.50 times 10 to the fourth. And don't worry that, you know, it changes the number on you. It's just taking it out of scientific notation. 3.00 times 10 to the fourth. And then the last one is 4.00 times 10 to the fourth. Okay. Now we're going to do our second list. So we start from the beginning again. So 0 0.100, enter. 0.0896. Enter. 0 0.0802. Enter. 0 0.0719. Enter. 0 0.0577. Enter. And then 0 0.0517. Enter. And then 0 0.0415. Enter. Okay. We have all of our values in. And we have our y-axis as L2. And we have the x-axis as L1. So maybe I'll just put that down here. So this is L1, and then this is L2. So now, in order to plot this, you're not going to go to y equals, because y equals is if you had the formula. We have no idea what this formula is, so we have to go to second y equals. That's stat plot. And we're going to turn this plot on. And they already said that it's, you know, L1 and L2, so I'm just going to say enter. And I want to turn it on. Right now it's off. So I press enter and you could even change the different type of graph. I guess, I guess we'll do this one because we're looking for that linear line. Um, and it already knows that 
okay, our X value is L1, which is what exactly we said, our Y value is L2. You can even change your markers if you want to make them like plus signs, you know, dots or whatever, or even change the color. So you could give it, you know, ooh, magenta, ooh, green. I'm feeling green today. Then just press enter. Beautiful. So now um, what we're going to do is we're not going to press graph because graph goes with your formulas. But if we want to see this plot, all we have to do is, I believe, let's see, if we go to zoom, that's it. It's zoom stat. So you could either press number nine. Oh, and there it is. Now, if we pull this up, let's see, can I just, oh, wow, look at that. If I pull this up, would you classify this as a linear line? Or is it kind of like an exponential decay? Well, if I, if I take my, I mean, we have technology here, right? And if I try to dry, draw a linear line and it corrects me, right? Look at that. That is not a linear line should be a full linear line. So since it is not linear and it's kind of tailing off, we can already automatically say that this um, graph or this data is not zero order. So just to make things easier for us, goodbye. We're now down to two. So basically what we have to do is we just have to go back and just tweak the y-axis a little bit. So what we're going to do is we just have to put the natural log in front of your um, concentration values and see if that forms a linear line. So we're going to go back to our stat. So we're going to press stat, edit. The X values don't change, but all you're doing is you're just changing the Y values. Probably the easiest thing to do is to... Um, just write them out again. But now you're just making all your values as LN. So here's the LN button over here. I'm just going to say LN of 0 0.100. You could close the parentheses if you want to. Press enter. And it does the LN for you. So that's why I love using the TI-84 is you just have to plug in the function and it will do the calculation for you. So now the next one would be LN of 0 0.08. 9, 6. Close parentheses, let it do the math for you. Beautiful. Next one, ln of 0 0.0802. Right? That looks good to me. Next one, ln of 0 0.0719. Are we having fun? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, ln 0 0.0577. Close it up. ln of 0 0.0517. Close it up. LN of 0 0.0415. <laughs> Close it up. Press enter. Okay. Now let's look at that graph. Um, we already did all our controls for stat plot. It's still on. If you want to change the color, that's fine with me. Uh, but all we have to do is basically go to zoom and press number nine. Whoa, there it is. It is a straight linear line. And maybe what I'll do is, I guess we could leave it there. And we already know that it's definitely not going to be second order, so bye-bye. And this is basically what we're working with. Oop. I guess I'll, I guess we'll just keep it like that. But basically, it's the same exact idea. If you have a linear line, which is exactly what we have, we know now that it's a first order reaction. So determine the order, it's first order. If we did want to write the rate law, ooh, kind of went a little past there. If we do want to write the rate law, it would be rate equals K times the concentration of, in this case I put A, but it's just for your reactant. The specific reactant that they gave us was SO2Cl2. Close it up. And you could put it to the first, but anything to the first is the same, so you could get rid of that. And now the last thing we have to do is just find out what that rate constant is. Now, 
whenever you're dealing with first order reactions, that constant, right, that slope is actually the rate constant. However, rate constants should always be positive. If you have a negative slope, which is just what these are going to show you, every time you have a first order reaction, it's going to be a negative slope. Just know that your slope equals negative k. So the negative is just saying that it's a negative slope, but your actual k value should be positive. So now it looks like, I mean, it's a clear negative value, and not clear negative value. What I meant was all of these points are clearly on the linear line. If you're taking a slope, you just have to take two points, but it doesn't matter to me what two points you have because it makes the linear line. Now keep in mind that what's the slope formula? The slope formula is y1 minus y2, or I guess we'll say y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Now keep in mind that we didn't change any of the time values, so the first value would be 0. The second one would be that 5,000, and then 10,000, and so on and so forth. It does not matter which two you take. Maybe I'll take the first and the second just to make the math easy. So we'll do, or maybe, maybe we'll do the first and the last, just to kind of spread them out. And remember that a point is always x comma y. So for this point, the x value was the, the time, that's zero. And then we will go back to the graph to just figure out what number the y is. Keep in mind that, remember, it's ln. It's not these values anymore. And then the last one, it's going to be the 4, 0 0.00 times 10 to the 4th, comma, whatever that um, ln of a is. So let's just go back to our stat and get the first value and the last value. The first value that goes with the, the time of 0 is the negative 2.303. So that's what I'm going to put over here negative 2.303. Close that up. And then for this one, the last value was the negative, oh boy, was the negative 3.182. Uh, so I'm going to say negative 3.182. And close that up. And if we want to just be more concise with our color coding, I should technically make these in red. Just because the formula has the x's in red, the y's in blue. So 4.00 times 10 to the negative fourth. And now we're ready to find the slope. So slope equals, take those two y values and subtract them. Maybe go from the bottom to the top. So we'll do negative 3.182 minus negative 2.303. Now, the most important part is that if negative 3.182, its counterpoint has to go in the same slot. So if you start off with this one, you got to start off with this one. So 4.00 times 10 to the negative fourth minus 0. Okay, let's simplify this, and then we're ready to solve. Slope equals... The bottom is just going to be the same number, 4.00 times 10 to the negative fourth. And then the top one, let's see, let's quit out of this. And then we'll say negative 3.182 minus a negative, which is technically a positive. Okay. So negative 0 0.879. And now we get that negative value, and that's totally fine. Let's find out what that slope is. Um, this value divided by 4 times 10 to the negative fourth. No. No, Christina. Did anybody catch that? I was like, what? It should have been to the positive fourth. I heard you guys. I heard you. Um, okay, so let's just delete that. There you go. Beautiful. Press enter. 
Aha, uh -huh, okay. So the slope is a negative 2 point, I guess, 3 sig figs, 2.20 times 10 to the negative fifth. And remember, that k value is the negative value of that. So if the slope was negative, the k is really positive. So my k value, and eh, maybe, let's see, maybe I can squeeze this up a little bit. Beautiful. K equals 2.20 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now, keep in mind that the units for K is always going to be dependent on the total order. In this case, we found out that the total order is 1. So if you have a total order of 1, just know that the units for K for a total order of 1 is always going to be your time to the minus 1. So just make sure that you're in seconds or minutes or hours, but in this case, we are in seconds. So this would be 2.20 times 10 to the negative fifth seconds to the minus one. And that is the K value for this one. Uh, I don't know who, who's texting me, but not right now. Not right now. We're doing videos. <laughs> you got to keep learning through distractions. Right? Don't pick up that cell phone. <laughs> Learning is way more important, right? They can wait. They can wait. Anyway, oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's keep going. So, um, order of reaction. First, rate constant 2.20 times 10 to the negative fifth with the sig figs. And that's it for this one. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And um, yeah, I love helping you guys out. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Keep studying hard, and I'll talk to you then. Okay, bye-bye.